great for sure. Thank you. Show up and you can turn into a juke deck. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And of course, fourth prize is a merch pack, so you can look as cool as these gentlemen do. We also have a banjos comp today, and they're walking around with QR codes. You don't have to do anything to uh, enter except sign up on the QR codes, and you can win four seats in a corporate box. No way finer to experience watching you gentlemen play than in a corporate box, is there? Can you imagine it? I want to see a corporate box, absolutely. All right, sign up on the QR code. The last thing we're going to mention, and this might be interesting to you, Junior, we've got a scavenger hunt today. Visit all of our different uh, marquees and activities. Enter via the QR code. That's all you've got to do, and at the end you'll get a prize just by being part of our scavenger hunt. Everything happens at Jack Jumper's Family Day presented by Banjos, doesn't it? Yes. We have put stuff in trees. Jook can get those stuff down. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, enough of my spruiking or the exciting stuff happening. Let's have a chat. What an exciting couple of weeks we've had. How did it feel last night, guys? Second win at My State Bank Arena in a row. Talk us through that. You can start, Jook. Um, I feel amazing, obviously being back home, the the support of the crowd, all this uh, push up over the home and uh, we, you know, when you get two wins in a row after the little patch that we have, it's, it's a great feeling going to the break. Yeah, well done. Yes, that deserves yeah. a round of applause. <laughs> now, you've been with us now four years, Clint. It's been a very exciting four years with several new additions to the team this year. So tell us about that, and I especially want to ask you, last week, the final minute of the game, there you were on court with Lockie, Brody, Archie and Walt. That must be an exciting feeling for someone like you, a veteran of the game, to be there with the next gen. You could have just said that I'm old. <laughs> I said no, it in many it. different ways. I, I think what's the age difference? It's probably about 15, 16 years age difference between myself and maybe Brody or Walt out there, but um, no, just to be out there with those guys and for them to get their opportunity and to be out on the floor in front of our fans at home, um, I mean, I remember my first year in the league and you're going out there and you're getting to do your thing, so hopefully we can provide them more opportunities going forward for, for them to continue to grow and um, soon enough they'll be stars of the league. They absolutely will be. Um, it's a wonderful culture that we have here that we talked about earlier with Scott Roth about helping develop talent. Speaking of developing talent, we've got Junior here with us. You're both dads, you've both got two kids. Um, tell us, let's talk about the joys of fatherhood. Tell us, how, what, how, what does it mean to you to get home? You know, you might be tired from a tough session and these guys are full of energy. Late us, nights, early mornings, love it, right? <laughs> I've seen sometimes um, these guys come to training with you at the end of training and there was a beautiful story that I believe you told Clint on the Jack Jumpers new podcast Vitamins presented by St Luke's look it up where you get your podcasts about turning around and Jack McVeigh was uh, playing Star Wars or something with uh, your son do you sometimes feel like that's is great you're sharing the parenting load with your teammates absolutely and they always put their hand up to do it as well so but just being able to, I guess it was kind of on a days off when it wasn't a formal practice and my son or my daughter would come in with me and um, they'd help us see our physio fill up ice bags or they'd grab the pool noodles that we use um, and they'd just have a sword fight or they'd go pick up a basketball and throw it to a coach. And, and that's part of building this club and, and making it in a family environment. And I mean, just to see the smile on, on their faces and them being involved in everything that, that we're doing on a day-to-day on a -day basis, um, uh, it's gold. And we get a kick out of it, they get a kick out of it. And um, it, it just provides more to the environment um, that we're working in. Yeah, it's wonderful. We love having such a family club. Um, now, Jook, I want to have a chat to you about how, you know, incredibly popular you've become in your time at the Jack Jumpers and the Jack Jumpers are popular you know you walk into whatever it might be the local supermarket and people recognize you and people um, you know they want to chat to you can you tell us about any funny fan interactions you might have or strange places you've been recognized um, I don't think there's anything strange really um, every time I meet people out in the shopping center all the playground is always been great uh, all is love and it's a 
supporting and um, just being here for two years now. The people embrace me and my family. And, yeah. The reason I thought it might have been strange is because I know that sometimes our wonderful fans send in all manner of gifts. So Port Sorrel Primary sent you in part of their school uniform and you were wearing the Port Sorrel Primary beanie. Our wonderful partners at Banjos basically gave you a coffee barista uniform and weeks later you were still wearing that puffer vest. They got it. <laughs> yeah, you still got it. So you, you, you're just embraced by the community and, and you embrace it back and you, you wear these crazy gifts that people send you. I mean, it's cold up here, so when you can get a hands on a beanie or a, a jacket, you gotta, you gotta take it. There we go, there we go, whatever you can take. Um, you, we, we love your fashion as well. I don't know if people can see the socks that Jook is wearing, but let's show them off. He left half of his sweats at home. <laughs> Cute little duckies. What do you think of Dad's socks, Junior? Yeah. Junior has the biggest smile all the time and we've got one of these rare moments where he's a little bit shy in front of everyone. Um, we were going to talk some more because the, the community has embraced you. Clint, four years ago you basically introduced the in and out game to junior basketballers. Put up your hand if you've played the in and out game now guys. Surely everyone knows it by now. Surely everyone. Yes, Jack the Jumper, it's his favourite game. Culture. Uh, and how we do things, and um, we'll continue to work as hard as we can over this little um, few moments of being off. I don't want to say it's a break. All right, no rest. We keep grit and grind working hard. Now, we're here in beautiful Tassie, and you have embraced a lot of Tassieisms, Tassie culture, but, you, you know, you're still an American, and coming up at the end of November is a special day in America. It's Thanksgiving. What do you do here in Tasmania? Are you going to do something with the club, with the, with the boys? Uh, well, in general, uh, what I've done every single year is I've bought turkeys for the Americans. So uh, the imports all have their turkeys uh, a day or two before. I just actually texted that out this morning. So uh, turkey is only really more popular here during Christmas. But uh, So I order those about a month out, and uh, all our imports will get those, and they'll have time to uh, have some uh, moments with their family. And unfortunately, we travel the right next day after that. So uh, we'll just have... Uh, a day at the house and, and hang out and, and, and do what we normally do, but we'll have turkey. Amazing, amazing. Well, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving here, but we are all very thankful to you, Scott Roth, for all that you do for our club and for our state. You've done an amazing job with the Jack Jumpers. We're a community club, we talk about that, uh, a very family orientated club. And now, a lot of our players, their fathers, they've got children. They come along, their children, at the end of um, training. Now, um, Tell us a bit about what that's like. I mean, I know I've witnessed um, Majuk Deng's young daughter. She's five years old. She gets some shots in on that um, hoop up at the full length. Tell us about all that. Yeah, I think it's obviously we are a family club, and I'm quite intentional about the guys that I end up recruiting, and a lot of them do end up having family members. And I think it's a great testament, you know, uh, after our game, especially at home, to see all the kids out on the floor with their family. And those are once-in-a-lifetime moments for a lot of these players. Uh, to share that with them and you know we bring them into the locker room after the game and so they get the full experience of what their fathers are doing and um, it is about being a family club it is also about um, you know uh, building these relationships with your kids that will last forever and, and I'm all for that at the end of the day yeah it is amazing what you can do we've got a lot of other future ballers here in front of us put your hands up if you like a bit of basketball guys or give us a cheer I know some of you do I think, uh, Scott Roth, what advice might you have for this next gen? Well, I think the thing that I've always said is uh, to enjoy yourself and there's no stress about anything that you're doing. I would play all the sports. Uh, that's what I did growing up in the States. You play all the sports until you get to one that you maybe you fall in love with a little bit more. Uh, but go out and uh, enjoy yourselves. Uh, this is uh, a great time of your life to build relationships and have friendships uh, that will last you for a lifetime. And there's no stress about trying to be a pro or anything other than enjoy yourself, have some fun, play all the sports and see what you fall in love with. Absolutely great advice. We're all about having fun. Um, I talked a little bit about how we have some of the players' kids come at the end of training. Now, some of us might remember last year we saw on the Instagram Jared Bairstow's puppy came along at the end of training. Now, you haven't managed to recruit any players with puppies as far as I know this year. Is that something you might look for in future list management? It might be a good idea. I might have to put that on a list, but we do have a few players that have their dogs that are a little older, but they don't come into training like that one was, and they're so cute, so we they're definitely so had to let them in. A family club means a puppy club from time to time. All right, we absolutely love Tasmania. The Tasmanians, 
whatever it might be, the weather gods have put on another beautiful day for family day. I know I ask you this all the time. What do you love about Tassie? Well, I just think I love the humble nature of the work uh, ethic of the people here in Tasmania. I think you have something really special here. I've been all over the world. I've coached all over the world. Um, and sometimes I think you take it for granted of what you have here in Tasmania. And um, I think uh, uh, the quality of life here is second to none. Uh, the people are second to none. And as I said before, I love this state and I love representing it. Well, we absolutely love having you here. Now, the last thing I'm going to mention that I forgot to mention before I introduced you, we've got an exciting raffle here today. The first prize is four courtside seats to a Jackie's game. We love having our supporters sit in courtside, so that's a bit of a spruik for the raffle. Um, can you hear the fans when you're there, when you're coaching and the people sitting courtside? Can you hear much of what they say? I don't hear too much as far as what's being said, but uh, I do feel the energy in the building without question. Uh, the players feed off of that. Uh, last night was, again, as loud as it can be in there. Uh, when that place is packed and people are into the game, which is just about every single night, uh, it is an exciting place to play. It's one of those places that I think actually the opposing teams love to come and play because they can't experience that environment in their own building. So uh, it's a credit to the fans that just keep showing up. And, um, it's a wonderful place to play, and, and uh, our players love being in there. And we absolutely love having you there. Thank you so much, Scott Roth. A big round of applause for head coach Scott Roth. Thank, thank you, so you much. thank you. And a big shout out for uh, Franny and her shoes, her sparkly shoes. So if you have a chance thank to you. see those, she's making a fashion statement. It. Thank you. Thanks. All right, appreciate that, Scott. I am going to be joined in a moment by two more very special guests. Don't think they're quite here yet, but that's all right. Your hands are going to go behind your back. Oh, Drim and Fab are not to be messed with. They're strategizing here. All right. So, yeah, very good. Jackson and Ava are excellent listeners and their hands are behind their back. Fab and Archie, hands behind back. Perfect. So now the challenge. This is hard because Archie's a big unit, Nick. You are right with this one? You're going to go hands between, but I mean, he's blocking the view of Nick's face. I can't see very well. No, no, you're good. You're good, Archie. Don't, don't slouch or you won't win. This is competition, like everything in life. All right, so Nick, Drim, Florence and Samuel, you're going to put your arms through the people in front of you. Here we go. Gorgeous. All right, now Georgia will place the donuts. Do not start yet. Let's have no false starts. All right, while Georgia gives out the donuts, let's hear it. Who thinks Samuel and Jax look like winners? Yeah, that's a good cheer. Who thinks Ava and Florence have got this? All right, Fab and Drim. What about our wonderful DPs, Archie and Nick? Oh, the underdogs. That was a pretty small cheer for Archie and Nick. I believe in you. Nothing inspires you like someone saying you can't do it. All right, help me out, everyone. We're going to count them in. In, we're going to start with three. In three, two, one, go. Oh, straight into it. Jack, fab, big bite. Boom. Oh, the chewing gets hard. Maybe you can do it. Whoa, boom, done. And time. Look at that, there's nothing left around Archie's face, straight down. Oh. No, no, he's finished. Uh-oh, third umpire. What do we think? It was removed from Nick's hand and in Archie's mouth. Does that mean Archie's the winner? It was all done and gone out of Fab's mouth. Does that mean uh, Fab's the winner? All right, everyone, shake hands with your... Oh, poor Ava hasn't finished hers. Good on you, Jax. You finish what's, what's there. I think they all need an outstanding round of applause. And a huge round of applause for our wonderful friends at Banjo's with their delicious donuts. They're too easy to eat, aren't they?